anesthesia, aspiration minimizes the possibility of injecting anesthetic solution into a blood vessel, it must be carried out by the operator prior to injecting anesthetic solution into any target area. Aspiration is accomplished by developing a negative pressure at the needle tip of the syringe. If the needle tip has punctured the vascular wall, blood will be forced back into the syringe and become visible to the operator. Any blood returned is termed a positive aspiration and anesthetic solution should not be deposited. The syringe should be removed and a new site is to be selected. Anesthetic solution inadvertently injected into a blood vessel may have an immediate toxic effect that involves the cardiovascular system, nervous system, and slash or the tissue in the immediate vicinity of the injection. In fact, it has been shown that almost half of the mortality in dental offices is due to the administration of local anesthesia to sensitive patients or injection into a blood vessel. If the needle penetrates a blood vessel, the lesion may cause a localized extraoral swelling of hemorrhaging blood within a few minutes. It may also spread into the neck before it can be brought under control. Plexus anesthesia, is the technique of delivering anesthetic solution to the connective tissues overlying the periosteum to produce anesthesia in and about a limited number of teeth. Plexus anesthesia may be used to advantage in regions of the oral cavity where bony tissue surrounding the roots of the teeth are thin enough to permit adequate diffusion of the anesthetic agent. Thus, this method of delivery is commonly used for anesthetizing certain teeth in the maxillary arch and their supporting tissues. Even the maxillary buccal cortical plate is sufficiently thin, with the exception of the first molar region, so that plexus anesthesia in this area is advantageous. Subperiosteal injections, may occur in maxillary plexus anesthesia. This can happen when the anesthetic solution is incorrectly delivered deep to the periosteum. Extreme care should be exercised to avoid subperiosteal injections because such injections can cause the fluid to tear the periosteum and its blood vessels from the bone, resulting in subperiosteal hematomas and considerable pain. Trunk anesthesia, also known as nerve block anesthesia, is the technique of delivering anesthetic solution close to the nerve trunk so that structures distal to the injection site are anesthetized. Most of the mandibular cortical plate is too thick for plexus anesthesia. Hence, for mandibular procedures, trunk anesthesia is the method of choice. Anesthesia is the loss of sensation due to injury, disease, or drug administration. Local anesthetics may be applied topically or injected either in the vicinity of the area to be anesthetized or into a conveniently accessible region in the proximity of the nerve or nerve supplying the area of interest. These anesthetic substances are pharmacologic agents that stabilize cell membranes, thereby blocking or reducing the excitability of the membrane. When a region of a nerve fiber is exposed to an anesthetic solution, that fiber cannot relay impulses through the affected region, hence, nerve conduction is blocked. Small, unmyelinated fibers, i.e., most pain fibers, are affected first, whereas larger, myelinated fibers, i.e., proprioception, touch, and motor, are blocked last. Because the effects of local anesthetics are temporary, recovery of excitability occurs in the reverse order, that is, large, myelinated fibers become conductive first and small, unmyelinated fibers become conductive last. Because pain and temperature fibers are usually small, the anesthetic can be applied in quantities that interfere mostly with these sensations while only minimally affecting proprioception, sensation of touch, or motor functions. Anesthetic agents may be introduced to anesthetize nerve endings, a process known as infiltration. Another process, known as a nerve block, can be employed to interfere with nerve conduction at a distance from the nerve ending. Infiltration is usually restricted to mucous membranes and is of limited use in the oral cavity. Nerve blocks, however, are important and are considered in two separate anesthesia categories, plexus anesthesia, restricted to a single tooth or a few teeth, and trunk anesthesia, involving blocking of pain sensation over a relatively large area. This chapter addresses anesthesia of the teeth and their adnexa. Plexus anesthesia in dentistry represents delivery of an anesthetic agent into the connective tissue overlying the periosteum. 
This anesthetic procedure is used to advantage where the cortical plate of the bone surrounding the dentition is thin and sufficiently cancel allows to permit diffusion of the anesthetic agent. Plexus anesthesia involves the delivery of anesthetic agent into the connective tissue overlying the periosteum. Plexus anesthesia may be used to advantage in regions of the oral cavity where bony tissue surrounding the roots of the teeth are relatively thin and sufficiently cancel allows to permit adequate diffusion of the anesthetic agent. The maxillary buccal cortical plate is sufficiently thin, with the exception of the first molar region, so that plexus anesthesia in this area is advantageous. Maxillary plexus anesthesia Plexus anesthesia is the mode of anesthetic administration used for most of the anesthesia sites in the maxillary arch. The maxillary teeth are supplied by the anterior superior, middle superior, and posterior superior alveolar nerves. The anterior superior and middle superior alveolar nerves are branches of the infraorbital nerve, whereas the posterior superior alveolar nerve is a branch of the trunk of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Proper accomplishment of plexus anesthesia should occur deep to the alveolar mucosa at or slightly above the mucogingival junction, below the fornix. Otherwise, the anesthetic agent will be injected in a region of loose connective tissue, permitting rapid dilution and removal of the anesthetic solution. Therefore, the anesthetic agent is to be deposited at or coronal to the apex of the tooth, permitting the drug to penetrate the periosteum and thin cortical plate. Anesthesia of the two premolas and the mesial buccal root of the first molar is achieved by depositing the anesthetic agent in the area just below the apex of the second premola, this procedure anesthetizes the middle superior alveolar nerve, when present, and slash or the dental plexus. When the palatal mucosa is involved in the operative procedures, the greater palatine nerve must also be blocked as it emerges from the greater palatine foramen. Anesthesia of the canine as well as the lateral and central incisors may be accomplished by one of two procedures. One technique involves an anterior superior alveolar nerve block, a plexus anesthesia, accomplished by depositing anesthetic solution above the roots of the anterior teeth. Another technique involves an infraorbital nerve block, discussed in the next section, known as trunk anesthesia. Anesthetizing the nasopalatine nerve in the vicinity of the incisive papilla, a particularly painful injection, will result in complete anesthesia on both sides of the anterior palatal region trunk anesthesia, nerve block, is a mode of anesthesia where the anesthetic solution is deposited in the immediate vicinity the nerve or nerve trunk proximal to the area to be treated. Maxillary teeth Several nerves serving the teeth and slash or their supporting tissues within the maxillary arch are accessible for nerve blocks via trunk anesthesia. Posterior superior alveolar nerve block The posterior superior alveolar nerve, PSA, is accessible on the maxillary tuberosity as the nerve enters the small posterior superior alveolar foramen. A block of the posterior superior alveolar nerve will anesthetize the three molars. However, during a posterior superior alveolar nerve block, anesthesia of the mesial buccal root of the first molar fails in about 28% of the patient population. Therefore, if profound dental procedures are to be performed on the maxillary first molar, the middle superior alveolar nerve should also be anesthetized. It must be kept in mind that the posterior superior alveolar nerve block will not anesthetize the labial gingival. Greater palatine nerve block. Care must be exercised in delivering a greater palatine nerve block. The anesthetic solution must not be injected into the greater palatine foramen or even close to it, because the lesser palatine nerves overlap the region. In the case where the anesthesia affects both the greater and lesser palatine nerves, both the soft and hard palates will be anesthetized, causing the patient to gag. Inferior alveolar and lingual nerve blocks Block of the inferior alveolar nerve, also known as a mandibular block, occurs at the mandibular foramen just before the inferior alveolar nerve enters it. The mandibular foramen is situated on the medial aspect of the ramus of the mandible, in close association with the lingula and the sphenomandibular ligament. The anesthetic agent should be delivered to this point by piercing the mucosa between the retromolar pad and the pterygomandibular fold, at the level of the occlusal plane of the three mandibular molars. 
most of the anesthetic solution should be deposited here. To anesthetize the lingual nerve, which lies close by, it is necessary to deposit solution just anterior and medial to the bony landmark. Anesthesia of the inferior alveolar and lingual nerves desensitizes the mandibular teeth and gingiva on that side. Occasionally, the buccal nerve must also be blocked to provide anesthesia of the mandibular buccal mucosa and gingiva. Mandibular nerve block. One advantage to the mandibular nerve block is that it provides a wide area of anesthesia for working on more than one tooth during one appointment because it anesthetizes the inferior alveolar nerve, the incisive, mental, and commonly the lingual nerve on the mandibular quadrant. This would include the buccal mucoperiosteum anterior to the first molar. The buccal mucosa of the molars must be anesthetized with a buccal nerve block. Disadvantages to the mandibular block include inadequate anesthesia, 15% 20%, positive aspiration, 10% 15%, highest of all intraoral anesthesia techniques, partial anesthesia due to inferior alveolar nerve slash foramen anatomy, accessory innervation of the mandibular teeth, oral landmarks not consistent, and lower lip and tongue anesthesia discomforting to patients and dangerous for certain individuals. Buccal nerve block, long buccal nerve block. The buccal nerve crosses the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible at the level of the occlusal plane of the maxillary molars. Hence, this nerve may be anesthetized just lateral to the mandibular ramus. It is not necessary to anesthetize the buccal nerve unless anesthesia of the molar buccal gingiva is desired. Mental nerve block. The mental nerve exits the mandibular canal via the mental foramen located on the lateral aspect of the mandibular body. The foramen is located just below the second premola, halfway between the gingival margin and the inferior border of the mandible. Anesthetic solution should be introduced deep to the mucosa at the level of the second mandibular premola, approximately at the fornix. Successful block of the mental nerve will anesthetize the facial periodontium of the mandibular premolas, canine, and incisors on one side, including adjacent gingival and alveolar tissues and the periodontal ligament. It should be remembered that if pulpal tissue is to be anesthetized, it will be necessary to block the incisive nerve at the mental foramen. Mandibular incisive nerve block The mandibular incisive nerve block is not frequently used because, when the inferior alveolar or mandibular block is performed, the anterior mandibular teeth are anesthetized. Also, when a mental nerve block is performed, the incisive nerve, the other terminal of the inferior alveolar nerve, may also anesthetize. The technique for administering the incisive block is very similar to that of a mental block, with the target area being the same. The major difference is that slightly more anesthesia is deposited at the mental foramen and, after retracting the needle, finger pressure is AP applied to force the anesthetic solution into the mental foramen, See Fig 19 to 9 for placement of the anesthetic. Buccal nerve block. The success rate for buccal nerve anesthesia is nearly 100%, however, it can be uncomfortable if the needle penetrates the periosteum. Because the tendon of the temporalis muscle may be penetrated, care must be exercised in depositing the anesthetic agent. Block anesthesia of the buccal nerve will anesthetize the buccal gingiva and mucosa of the mandibular molars. Mandibular incisive block. The incisive block in the mandible is not often utilized because an inferior alveolar, mandibular, block will anesthetize the anterior teeth in the mandibular arch. However, the mandibular incisive block will permit the oral professional to work on multiple anterior teeth at one appointment. It must be remembered that only the pulp of these anterior teeth will be anesthetized and, if lingual gingiva is to be involved, that region should also be anesthetized.